Hi, my name is Sam Archer, and I'm here with Stefan Harris. Uh, we're at SOBs, and they just finished with the first set, and we're just going to have a few minutes to just check him out. Mr. Stefan, how are you? Fantastic. I just finished playing some music, so I feel good you right feel now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where, uh, where do you hail from? I'm originally from Albany, New York, from upstate New York. Okay. And um, I noticed you did the vibe tonight. Is that your main instrument? That's my main instrument. I play vibes. I also play some marimba, okay. which is like a wooden version of that instrument. But I also play some piano, mm -hmm. some all the keyboard instruments. But the vibes, is that's my heart. That's yes, what I've been doing uh, ever since I was a little kid. I feel completely connected to that instrument. I don't, you know, I don't even have to look at it to play it anymore. Uh, yeah, I know this. I can just feel it, man. You know, <laughs> it's like it's like an extension of my fingers at this point in life. You know. All right, all right. When did you start uh, music? Man, I probably started music in the womb, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, oh, like you a too. lot of musicians, man. It's, just, it's a part of your life as long as I can remember. Uh -huh. I remember being a little kid and watching cartoons, and I could care less what was going on in the cartoon. I was be listening to the music in the, the background. Score, the, the oh man, music. it was some incredible music. Yes, so I've yes. always been fascinated with music. My mother's a minister, mm -hmm. so I grew up in the church hearing incredible music. Wow, the music has just always been a part of my life. All right, man. Um, where did you study? I actually studied um, primarily classical music initially. My mm -hmm. undergraduate degree is in classical music from the Manhattan School of Music. Okay. And then uh, when I I started at Eastman School of Music and transferred to Manhattan School. While I was there, that's when I first started learning about jazz. So okay. I started hearing other students who played a little bit. I hadn't really been exposed to much jazz. Okay. And I got the bug, man. They checked, showed me some Charlie Parker. That was it. <laughs> I was like, whoa. You were so. Oh, man. It was like Beethoven is my man. Stravinsky, I love it. But when I heard mm -hmm. Charlie Parker, oh, man. It turned your world around. Oh, man. It's all beautiful, but there was something so incredibly mm -hmm. liberating about jazz. It's just the, the idea that you could really be yourself and tell your own story, that you had to be yourself, and that you had to bring a lot of spirit and soul to it. I love that element of the music. I saw a lot of that in the first half of the, of the, of the set. Mm. And that was pretty, you know, pretty moving. Oh, man, we love it. This is our life. I mean, come <laughs> on, man. This is like our jobs. Are you kidding me to get on stage and play music? This is a blessing. Yeah, I, could you hire me to bring the water for you? <laughs> Come on the road with us, man. Um, <clears throat> how did this project happen from from your angle in terms of three great new? I don't I'm, I don't know if I should say new school musicians in terms of the next generation of jazz or how how did it, how did it happen? What, what was the brainchild? It started with it started with a phone call from a guy at the record company. We're all on Concord Records, mm -hmm. so the president of Concord had this idea of, to bring us together. He knew a couple of musicians in Cuba that mm -hmm. he was interested in working with. So when I got the phone call and they told me it was David Sanchez and Christian Scott, I was like, "Of course, man! <laughs> <laughs> Where's my plane ticket? Man? You know, man, come on, these are my brothers." So, okay. and the crazy thing is, all the years that We've known each other. We haven't actually had a chance to play together until until, until this project. So you know, mm -hmm. you build me playing music is spiritual, man. You feel yes. a connection with someone even before you touch your instrument. Mm -hmm. So these are like my brothers. So okay. to be able to actually pick up my mallets, you know, David take his horn and Christian, and we we come together to make music. It's it's incredible. I the it, it gels. It really gels up. You know, the set I saw it. it comes together really nice, you know, and, and the elements are really, really good. So you, you reside where? You're in the U.S. or you're? Yes, in... I live. I live in actually. I live in New Jersey. Okay. Just across the bridge okay. here, so not too far. So everyone is local, or? I'm... No, I think David may. David lives in uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the other guys live in New York. Okay, so it's pretty. <clears throat> All right. Okay. The guys that we recorded with, uh, we went to Cuba and recorded in Havana with two young. Uh, Cuban pianists and their ensembles. Oh. So we actually didn't know them mm -hmm. until we got there. Okay. That's part of the, the magic and the energy of the CD. Okay. The thing okay. is, you know, with jazz, some of, some of the most important stuff is the unpredictable stuff. Mm -hmm. The stuff that you rehearse and put together, that's, sometimes that's mundane. Yes. It's when you make a mistake mm -hmm. that something interesting happens and unfolds. You start to see how people react to it. So I think the energy that's special on the CD is from the fact that we didn't know each other. 
that you put a bunch of musicians together in a room. Mm. We didn't even speak the same language. I speak Spanish. Mm. David speaks Spanish. Christian didn't speak Spanish. Most of the people with us didn't. <laughs> a lot of the musicians there only spoke Spanish. Oh. So it was there was like a real communication barrier in terms mm -hmm. of language. But once we started playing, we all understood each other just fine. The element of the unknown. That's, you can't play jazz without yes, that. That's yes, what jazz yes. is. You know, the rest of it is all written out. That's not that's not the jazz portion of jazz. Jazz happens when something goes wrong. <laughs> you know? That's when you come together because you come together to, to solve a problem. Yes. If yes. everything is going along perfectly, how interesting is that? You know, uh, it's boring. Yeah. If that's happening, usually I throw something in there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you throw it off track a little bit. You know. Well, um. What was it like being in Havana? I mean, you, you visited there before, or this was like your first time? Actually, it was my first time being there, and uh, it was an incredible experience. Okay. I'm really happy that I, I was able to go to Cuba before the borders have really opened up. Okay. Because okay. you're seeing it in a more pure state. Mm -hmm. You're getting a chance to see uh, another political structure mm -hmm. before it's been globalized. Okay. You know, okay. one of the things that I remember seeing that I found very moving as soon as I got there, as soon as I left the airport and got in the car, was that you didn't see the divide of classes that we see here. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't see somebody in a, in a beat up car next to somebody with $50,000 rims on their okay. car. The way we see here. Everybody was basically around the same mm -hmm. economic bracket. So after a while, you stop thinking in terms of class when mm -hmm. you're in Cuba. Okay. Because everyone's about the same, you start to just see people, which mm -hmm. I thought was a, it's unusual <laughs> for living in the United States. Yes, yes. And I thought that was one of the most moving experiences for me personally, being in Cuba. Your your lineage, is it connected to Cuba, connected to Puerto Rico, Dominica, or everything? Is, come uh, on, man. We all come through there at some point. You know? I know, I know, I know. But uh, <laughs> not, I mean, not directly. I'm an Af African American. So okay. My people are. Uh, as long as far as I can draw back is in the United States. Okay, but you said you spoke Spanish, so I thought there was some sort of a... No, I speak Spanish because I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> because I like to study, I like to learn. It's just okay, one of those things okay. that I've been wanting to learn for a while, so I started teaching myself a couple of years oh, ago. Okay. So I love language. Perfect. Music music is, is like language. language. Yes. So I'm, you know, I'm, next I'm going to learn French, I'm going to learn Japanese. Alright, <laughs> Well... Thanks for your time. Hey, my I brother. enjoyed Appreciate this interview it. and I'm definitely going to read up on you guys some more and, and put you guys out there. The world needs to know about you guys. All right, man. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself, bro. Thanks again. Hi, I'm Sam Archer and I'm here with David Sanchez from the uh, SOBs and they just did two amazing sets of music and we're just going to interview him for a few minutes. Mr. Sanchez, how are you this evening? Good, 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 very good. Uh, congrats on the performance and on the new album. Tell me, uh, how did the album come about? How, you know, getting the whole, the three of you together, what, you know, who was the, uh, the brainchild? Well, actually, originally, to be honest, uh, it was a, a Concord Records idea. Okay. The whole concept, John Burks, and between John Burks and Christian, uh, Chris Dunn, and mm -hmm. uh, between the two of them, uh, they came with this concept. Okay. So we, we just helped shape that the, the, the idea. Mm -hmm. As, you know, they brought the idea, then we sort of like, okay, we can do this, we can go this other direction. Okay, let's, uh, you know, let's figure out how we're gonna accomplish mm -hmm. that. But if we go to this. Who really, you know, when the who originated the idea? It was definitely Concord Records okay. idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, how long are you doing this? <laughs> how long? Uh, this? You mean this project or jazz music? Oh, music. Uh, oh no, music. Oof. <laughs> A long time, man. You know, we're, you know, uh, twenty-seven years since I, you know, since I started it. Okay. You know, and you know, it's been an incredible journey. That uh, well, you yeah, know, it just doesn't stop. You know, it's just, uh, the title. The oh, 90, the songs. Yeah, that I, no title. Ninety miles. Oh, ninety of, miles. Of the yes. album. Yes. What What does that mean when you say ninety miles? Well, ninety miles actually is just referring to pretty much the distance. You know, geographically speaking, 
distance between uh, Cuba and the first point in the United States. Ah, so you know, it's, it's 90 miles. <laughs> Uh, okay. It refers okay. to that. You know, I, that I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> we too. <laughs> yes. How many instruments you play? You, I saw your, your sax, saxophone was primary. Um, you play anything else? Well, I play a little bit of percussion. Unfortunately, we didn't have the uh, uh, equipment. We didn't have the check it. We didn't have a few things mm -hmm. that I, I wish I, you know, that would have been here so okay. I could have played. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it's basically saxophone. I play saxophone. Believe me, it's enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, uh, it's a handful. Where did you study? Uh, well, I my first musical training was in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and uh, it was when I was twelve. And okay. I graduated from high school. It's a performing arts school uh, that is basically called Libre de Música, La Libre de Música in Spanish, mm -hmm. like free school of music. If you would translate literally what it means, okay. it means that. So, uh, so I studied there, and then I went uh, studied a year in Puerto Rico, and then I trans transferred to uh, Rutgers University okay. in New Jersey. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was it like in terms of the, the transition from Puerto Rico to Rutgers? It was just like a step up, or well, I mean, every experience is different. Mm -hmm. It's not like up or down. You know, I don't look at it like that. For what I was wanting to absorb, you know, and, and, and grasp, it, it, that, that was definitely a better place than in Puerto Rico, because mm -hmm. the whole environment, there was some great teachers in there, mm -hmm. that, you know, like Kenny Barron, and such as Ted Dunbar, Larry Ridley, it was a mm -hmm. great, great uh, faculty, guys who, you know, had unbelievable experience playing, so it was a Unbelievable uh, learning experience for me, you know, just to be absorb a different it's culture. Different. Yes. You know, because yes. I was, you know, I was dealing with something else. Yes. So the mainly the purpose I went there was to get in, in touch, get in okay. tune with the with the culture. Who are your uh, influences? At least one or two influences. In, on saxophone or on okay? Saxophone. Well, oh wow, <laughs> one or two that'll be com very complete. How many did you say? Ten. <laughs> no, no, I, you know, I, okay, main, okay. main influence is Coltrane, you know, you know, John Coltrane and Sonny Rollins, and uh, definitely many others, Lester Young, you know, okay. Joe Henderson, Wayne Shorter, mm -hmm. this is, is big, is Dexter this, Gordon, you know. Is Grover in there somewhere? And Grover is, is there too, of course, <laughs> I mean, he influenced everybody, so, in one way or the other. Okay, well, um, did, is there anything... You might want to say that I didn't ask you. No, man, you asked the whole <laughs> right question. That's it. That's great. Well, Mr. David, thank you very much for the interview. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, blessings on the journey. Yeah, I appreciate it. record, you know, great performance. And I hope you guys keep it up, man. Hey, listen, thank you so much. You are. appreciate it. Hi, my name is Sam Archer. I'm here with Mr. Chris Scott. We're at SOBs when they just did the first set, and we just want to get a little bit of information from Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for, thanks for your time. Oh, no. Where are you here from, man? I'm from the Bronx. The birthplace of jazz. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I liked your horn. Kind of reminded me of Dizzy a little bit. Was he one of your influences or something? Uh, I mean, I listen to a lot of guys. I love okay. Dizzy, but uh, yeah, my horn is the first of its kind in the world. It's like oh. a hybrid between the cornet and the flute horn and the trumpet. Was that your creation? Mm -hmm. or, um... There's another one I haven't played yet either. And you didn't see I'm playing on the second set. It's oh, like, okay. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah I did. It, it, not that the sound reminded me of Dizzy, but I'm just saying. Sure. No, no, of course. Just the look. The, it's, yeah, it's, just the it's look. Similar, yeah, similar. Okay. Um, what age you started uh, doing this stuff? Playing music? Yeah. I grew up in New Orleans, music is everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a pretty simple choice. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, studied, you used, I, I think you yeah, studied. Yeah, New Orleans Center for Creative Arts and then the Berkeley College of Music in Boston. Oh, you went to Berkeley? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. How did this project happen? Because... The record label called me and asked me if I wanted to do with Abby Sanchez and Stephon Harris. Okay. And I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you, you guys, you guys had worked before together, or uh, it was just in different capacities? You know, uh, not too much stuff. 
Okay. We've known each other for a long time, man. Okay. I've known so, these guys since I was maybe 12. Oh. I would be on the road and I would see them. They were around my age then, or maybe a little bit younger. Mm -hmm. I was always looking up to them. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think, yeah, Stefan is 10 years older than I am. I think David is close to 20 years older. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you guys met, well, okay, on the road here and there, mm -hmm. in, in school as well? Or? Uh, well, I, I actually did some work for Stefan. Uh, he was working on a piece at the New England Conservatory, and I went to play trumpet because they didn't have anybody to play it. Okay. I remember mm -hmm. that. What other instruments you play? Anything brass I can play. Wow. Um, I can play euphonium. I can play, if it's brass, I can play. Okay. I also play piano, bass, and drums just to have a general knowledge. A general. Um, I'm a brass guy. I noticed, I noticed um, a lot of credit was given to um, David or David mm -hmm. in terms of composing. He did, most of um, composing. On this project. Sure. Okay. But you also compose, I suppose? I do too, but I didn't write anything for this record. Because I was, at the time we were doing this record, I was working on writing music for a double album that I'm putting out. Oh. So I'm making, a, I'm making a lot of music. So I had, okay. to, I had to pick. Yeah, well, yeah. I liked the first set. Well, thank you. It was, it was pretty good. Um, I'm learning again. I'm actually trying to figure out the time signatures in the first piece. Oh, man, they go all over the place. <laughs> what was the first one that we played? Brown Bell? Um, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, the first piece was that. It's in four. There's just yeah, but it, uh, There's a lot of six going on in there, too. It's mm -hmm. just subdivided. But okay. the song is basically in four, the best of my knowledge. Okay. It's a blues. Well, I was feeling the four, but of course the accents were happening uh, in different areas, so I was like, oh, time signature is this thing. I think the second bar, the main part of the phrase is on the upbeat, so that's why. It yeah, it was, it was interesting. But yeah. it's really good. I know you guys don't have a lot of time, but thank no, you for your time. Yeah, it's a pleasure, man. Nice um, to meet you. I'm going to be reviewing the record. Okay. I'm <laughs> happy I met you. I'm going to definitely be reading up on you and, and studying up and, and getting some information cool, on you. Seven albums? 28? Yeah. I mean, hey, you plan to do 100? I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs>